Have you ever just chatted with your friend and all of a sudden they were like, you know what, I was wondering if maybe you had a pair of 18th century stays I could borrow. And you were like so embarrassed because you had to say, oh, I'm sorry, I don't have 18th century stays. I'm probably the only person in the world that doesn't, but I'm sorry, I don't. Well, I, for one, refuse to ever find myself in this situation. I will be that friend who can lend you stays should you ever need them. Because now I do have a pair of 18th century stays that I hand sew myself. Let me show you how I made them. So this project was a bit of an improvisation. I know, that's wild, because everything I do is so carefully planned. I drafted the pattern for it myself by using photos of extant as well as reconstructed stays, and I looked at patterns for reference. But I changed a lot, and I got some things a bit wrong too, but we'll get to that later. After I had my pattern and was fairly happy with it, I also did a mock-up off-camera, then I cut out the pieces. I used two layers of this tightly woven grayish cotton blend. I think that's what it is, I'm not sure since the fabric was a gift, but this is my best guess. And in between this grey fabric, I added two layers of very thin cotton lawn that I had left over from another project. So it's four thin layers altogether. After I had all of my layers, I basted them together so that they will stay together nicely as I sew the boning channels. Which were the most time-consuming task of this project. Hand sewing channels for 38 bones might not be everyone's cup of tea, but I happen to enjoy this type of tea, or at least not hate it. There's something therapeutic about it. By the way, this is a half-boned pair of stays since I was not ready to spend thousands of hours on thousands of channels over the entire garment. I might be a little crazy, but I'm not that crazy. So with a pencil, I marked the boning channels and then they were done with tiny running stitches. As far as the boning goes, it's not real boning, it's just plastic cable ties, or zip ties, I believe they're called. I can't really get proper corset boning when, where I'm from, and it would probably be more expensive anyway. In any case, I find that for stays, which don't need to shape the body as much as, say, a corset does, these plastic ties work really well. They're flat and flexible, but still provide a good shape to the garment. After all the channels were done, about an eternity later, I proceeded to add the straps, which are also made up of four layers, just like the rest of the panels. At the back, soon to be known as the front, I'll explain everything in a minute, bear with me, uh, there are 10 eyelet holes at the back and two uh, at the front for each strap to tie to in order to make it adjustable. I went for this orange thread to give it a pop of color and it will kind of match this peach ribbon that I have for trimming. So I added the straps and once all the seven panels were boned, I could sew them together and the stays were finally starting to get a shape. Now, in between these steps I did a lot of fittings and was very happy to see that the stays generally turned out pretty good, an absolute improvement from my first ever pair which I attempted to make about a year ago, I might talk about it at some point. Uh, the pattern was altered to fit better, the boning channels were positioned properly and were made tighter to fit the bones better, the fabric was a better choice. But, there are still two things that aren't quite perfect. First of all, I should have lowered the front for an inch or maybe even two, but I'm always so hesitant with this because the worst thing imaginable is that you cut too much of the fabric and you end up with a, basically an underbust stays. Not what I was going for. So, the front is a bit too high, but it's, it's not that terrible, you know? And remember how I said that the back will be known as the front? Yeah, I figured that a far better method was to make the stays tie at the front. It was easier for me, I didn't have to pester anyone else to do it. I would be able to do it by myself whenever I needed to. Not that I would be wearing this garment on a regular basis, but still. And front lacing stays were absolutely a thing. You often had a separate stomacher piece with those. And that's all fine. 
that's not really a problem, it's just not how I imagined this pair of stays, and because of it, they were not drafted to tie at the front, and some of the elements don't work quite as they should. Now the position of the straps was slightly off because the front became the back, and they have to be adjusted before I put the stays on, because I can't reach them once they're on. Basically, I'm wearing the stays the other way around. And, well, they surprisingly still look pretty good. But, uh, yeah, it's been a journey, guys. I'm still immensely happy with the results, and I learned so much from this project. I'm glad I did it, even though I had some bumps along the way. But I'm happy with the end result. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please remember to like and comment and share it with anyone who might enjoy it. And that's it for today, see you soon, bye!